Hello friends and welcome to this edition of On The Farm. We are at the Prospect Experimental site where we had an opportunity to speak with one of our extension officers, Ronald King, a.k.a. Banky. Stay with us when we come back. Our feature. Thanks for staying and welcome back to On The Farm. As I said, we had an opportunity to speak with our good friend Banky um, about what to expect from the Extension Division at the 26th Annual Open Day on the 26th and 27th of March. We got an insight as to what exactly is Extension. March 26th and 27th is our annual 26th Agriculture Open Day which will be situated at the El Comedo Willet Park. Here we are at um, Prospect area where we have um, our experimental station. Right behind of me is um, a few displays where we have to showcase to encourage um, backyard gardening or just for the homeowners just who want to I mean, grow a few crops to feed themselves to improve food security on the island at least you know you're growing the f food that you like to eat at least you know it's come from a safe place. Um, my name is Ronald King, Extension Officer. My job as one of the Extension Officer is to encourage the general public, our farmers, anyone who have that interest in growing a crop. My job is to get that crop from preparation stage, preparing the area, the type of farming you want to be dealing with, whether it's in parts, a small space, hydroponic system, greenhouses, outdoor field. I'm one of those guys you will call to ensure that you're doing the right thing, guide you properly if you don't have the expertise already. Well apparently we have right now between five to six extension officers. Some work in groups as two, but most work as one. I work by myself in District 1, which is start from Pinnies and we reach all the way up to Rallins, Ginger Lamb at the police station. So I'm also in charge of most of the schools on the island. I give, give expertise and technical support to the schools, the school garden and also when they have um, the CXC projects, if the, the um, greenhouses need repair, uh, technical support setting up the drip system, they, will, they, um, they contact the department and myself will go and make sure everything is set up so the students will have the greenhouse itself ready to use upon doing their practical. And as I said, all the extension officers along with myself do the same type of work. We can do pilot projects with backyard farmers our homeowners encouraging them to use a small space where it's planted in pots. Uh, and especially we believe in recycling because we have a lot of plastic bottles and also plastic pots that come within the country when they come from flowers and other fruit trees that still remain around a lot of um, households and so are not being used. Even bad tubs, old bad pans, buckets, all those could be used to plant vegetables and which also can keep money in your pocket. And also these are teaching you can use, especially you have young children around not doing much in the afternoon coming from school this can be a small pilot project for them which encourage them to be earning their own money in a sense they'll have money in the summertime uh, when school is off or even just a daily activity for them keep them fit and at least they're feeding themselves and their family and knowing the food have been grown just inside their yard and also they know that food will be rich and full of nutrients and pesticides free. Bank you also took the opportunity to speak to us about composting. Let's take a look. One of the things extension will be showing for the open day this year is um, a compost bin. This is a simple blue barrel drum which I made along with a stand. Um, the idea is to not, when you think of compost, think dirty. Uh, when you have to just have something outside, just throw in, in a small space in the yard and just throw your dry leaves or your green organic matter and have some compost. Compost really need three things. You need nitrogen, which is your manure. In some cases, you don't have a system manure. You'll have to use a fertilizer called urea, which is high nitrogen. You need water and the green or dry matter, which is your leaves, your grass that you cut in your yard, even some of those shrubs. You don't want them to be too thick because they should be able to break down within three months. So here we have a, a, a blue barrel drum, which I cut out, get two hinges, make a door so you can open and close. And this is a control 
compost bin. We have some holes underneath, so once you add water and your manure, and you, wet, you wet the material a little bit, you can turn it and the, water will, the excess water will drain out. And with three months, this will be able to break down into humus. And this is the perfect organic fertilizer you'll want to add to your plant. It is slow releasing. No matter how much rainfall, it will not leach. It will remain the same place and a handful of compost is good enough to grow a tomato crop or a bell pepper crop. That organic matter is very important because each plant takes out nutrients from the soil and it's important that you add that, that organic material into the soil and composting is one. Also, all those dry papers and dry leaves you have at your offices in, and boxes, all those, instead of taking them to the landfill and burning them, they also can place into your compost bin and will break them over a period of time back as humus. In addition to composting, he showed us some displays as they would be at the open day this year, um, focusing on recycling. Let's take a look at that clip. Here we are here look, still looking at um, a few displays. This was a foam box, I think a TV or something had come in it, a furniture or something. So I decided to cut it down, get some manure on topsoil and just put in a few um, cabbages to show how much cabbage you can have in a small space for those cabbage lovers. If not, if you like lettuce, you can use lettuce the same way or tomatoes. But this is just to show you the idea what a small space can do when you just see certain things and it, it is reusable it's, and it's a foam as you see. I just put some holes at the bottom, put in some topsoil and manure, that organic material. And this is the type of cabbage you have here. All right. Alongside here, you also have some materials. As I say, we try to push recycle. So everything here is in pots. You have some pitaya, the dragon fruit that people love, which is very expensive, so tend to propagate some. Also, you have some eggplants. Don't mind the little spots with the little holes and stuff like that. It's fine because eventually, as the plants mature, these leaves will get picked off. The fruit, these holes won't affect the fruit. You have some seasoned peppers. Also, I have some, as you realize, if anyone knows, these are strawberries. And the department will also be selling some strawberries for openness. So the strawberry lovers, I encourage you to come early and get some strawberry. What happened to strawberry right now, they tend to hatch and jump. So Cardin, they start a short shoot. I will put one, one of this next to a pot with some soil and then this will turn, hatch into a root and then I'll just cut it off and then keep hatching. This is what I did with all of these. Now you have some, um, the plastic bottles we tend to have, most of us have our water and as you see, it's a tomato tree right here and you already have a tomato. The idea is to show you not fooling the public that I'm just making up this stuff so that you come and get an early preview. You understand? So when you come open there now, you'll see this tomato ready to harvest, ready to eat. Big and plump. Okay? As you continue to come up, you'll find more cabbages in single pots. And you'll see more tomatoes in pots, eggplant, bell peppers, and seasoned peppers. Well, this one that is here, I'm training this plant eventually they will be turned upside down and they will still continue to go as normal so at this stage perhaps so next week in a couple of days i will just get a twine and attach to the pipe and then hang it as that's why you see have this will be here and the plant will be hanging upside down and continue to go and be a food the plant does not know where it's at it's just to manipulate the plant and can, once the plants get these nutrients it will tend to want to bend to go up to the sunlight by training it and have the string around it it would not bend and will continue to be a food, just the same. Over here, we tend to be getting into a lot of um, banana production. So what I tend to do is use the banana chunks, cut out some small three by three holes, get some manure and some nice topsoil, and we use them. So you have some lettuce you have here. As you see, they are small in the next couple of weeks, ready for open day, they will be big and plum. You have some seasoned peppers and you have some bell peppers. Bell peppers already have an flowing right now, so within the next two weeks or stuff like that. And ready for open day, you'll have bell peppers ready to pick for open day and lettuce ready to pick. And all this, this is just recycling the banana chunks, which you know have a lot of moisture in it, and the plant root will just run through and move towards the moisture as possible. Well, for those who have any spouting resting down and or they finish put up the spouting around their house to collect their water into their system. Any extra spouting, you can just have them rest in a small space. Fill them. You don't really have to burn a hole in the bottom because some of the water will re retain 
and it's better for the plant. You don't want it having too much of water if it's in the area where you're going to get a lot of rain, because you have to throw out some of the water. But the plant will thrive just as new. These plants is less than three weeks, and you see how well they look. So in the next week and a half, they're ready for harvesting. Simple as that. 30 days, lettuce is ready. Also, here we have um, water bottle. This is an experiment I'm trying to show the importance of plants or trees in general on the surface of, of the ground or the earth itself, the importance. We have a lot of overgrazing, deforestation, just bad farming practices. Here you have some string beans and some corn right here. By the time I open, you will have more shrubs and different stuff, weeds come inside here, but those I would not remove. Here, at each of them you have a water encatchment because the idea is to show the importance of how trees filter your ground water. So once this is filled with water, the water will come out with the, with the plants and come back here. It will be clean with the shrubs and the debris over here, the bush and all this. This water will tend to be a little more dirty than the one with the plants. And the one would have no plants at all or, or they all just sold itself, the water would be real muddy. And this is to show the importance of water filtration by the trees and the plants, how important it is for your growing water that is really available for drink. The plants itself and the root zone tend to have very important when it comes to that water, the water, that the potable water. So we tend to so farming once you're farming, it's important to make sure you're doing the good agricultural practices, whether it's in animal husbandry or crop farming. You've got to make sure that area is not overgrazed, not overplant, over overfertilized, because you don't want to contaminate that water table, but the plant itself, so it shows the difference, the importance of having that area covered, that green cover of plant material, because it also helps with your potable drinking water. Okay, if you just have all soil, that water will, be, will, more, will need more pressure put on the, um, the government, uh, the private sector who is dealing with the water system for, for, for where you live at because you need, need more filter to filter to get that water as clean as possible so it's important for the ground to be covered so come this open day visit all, all the stores at the agriculture department open their, um, the E.T. Willet Park we'll have hydroponic system to look at we'll have different drip system, venturo system, fertigator system to show the different how technology of chain from, from within sprinkler to hose or buckets where you have now a drip system and then you have a fertigator hooked up to it which will show water in your plant will be much easier. Also you'll have also um, to show the extraction we'll use lemongrass and cinnamon bush to show how you take out the oils because remember most plants have a little bit of oils so we'll show some distillation of essential oils and also have some small machinery to show to grate coconuts and cassava that a, a simple small homeowner can make and just to, to easy to grate the, the, um, the cassava or the coconuts if they don't like to use that simple hand grater to make them more efficient, especially those who use coconut and cassava in a large amount. This will, will have a small display machine to show how simple it is to get the work more, done more efficiently for you guys. So look forward for the general public. Welcome all the, the neighboring islands to come over and witness our 26th annual 2020 Open Day. Look forward to seeing you guys. Fresh local fruit and vegetables produced for our nourishment by local eat local. Well friends, that's it for this edition of On The Farm. Today we spoke with Ronald King, one of our extension officers, who is always willing and ready to assist you should the need arise. We want to encourage you to call Banky, set up some backyard farming, or if you have just a little space, he'll know exactly what to do to assist you in getting some fresh uh, fruits and vegetables locally grown, of course by you. You'll feel satisfied knowing 
that what you're eating you have produced. Open Day 2020 takes place on March 26th and 27th, 10 a.m. daily. We hope to see you there in your numbers. Until then, I am Rohan Isles and I'll see you on the farm.